laboratory department of basic science and humanities kolhapur institute of technologies college of engineering and autonomous institute kolhapur in today's lecture we are going to discuss about disadvantages of hard water in steam generation boilers in lesson 7 of unit 1 that is water technology in previous lecture we have seen that when we are using hard water that is impure water for steam generation in boilers there are different disadvantages number 1 is scale and sludge formation second is caustic embrittlement boiler corrosion and priming and foaming out of these the first two scale and sludge formation and second is caustic embrittlement we have seen in detail in previous lecture in today's lecture we will discuss about remaining two disadvantages one is boiler corrosion and then a priming and foaming now what is corrosion as we know corrosion is nothing but it is the decay or deterioration of a metal from its surface when metal comes in contact with environment that it may be dry corrosion or it may be wet corrosion that is due to corrosion the metal loses its strength the properties of the metal or metallic material get affected due to corrosion however in case of boiler as we are using impure water or somewhat we can say hard water to produce steam inside the boiler if there are impurities into the boiler feed water these impurities leads to boiler corrosion these impurities present in water they will react with boiler material from inside and then the boiler material starts to corrode that is nothing but boiler corrosion that is it is a decay of boiler material by chemical or electrochemical attack by its environment in the diagram will get idea about the boiler corrosion that is boiler corrosion will lose its strength whenever we are using somewhat impure water for the steam generation in boilers now what are the impurities that they are responsible for the boiler corrosion the number one is nothing but dissolved oxygen as we all know the oxygen has a capability to dissolve in water and if we feed that water containing dissolved oxygen for steam generation in boilers the dissolved oxygen directly attacks on to the boiler material at somewhat higher temperature that is that uh, dissolved oxygen it reacts with uh, iron of a boiler material in presence of water and we are getting here ferrous hydroxide now if there are some enough quantity of dissolved oxygen that ferrous hydroxide it get converted to ferric hydroxide which is nothing but a rust that is dissolved oxygen it will directly attack on to the boiler material which is generally made by steel or iron and then rusting of that boiler material starts here and then boiler material will lose its strength then there is a removal of dissolved oxygen that is as a boiler is a closed uh, system we cannot remove dissolved oxygen by means of a boiling we have to use here a different techniques just like by adding calculated quantity of sodium sulfide or sodium sulfite or hydrazin we can remove the dissolved oxygen that is if we add sodium sulfide that sodium sulfide will react with dissolved oxygen and then we are getting sodium sulfate which is easily removable by means of a simple blow down operation when that sodium sulfate reach its saturation point after that it will start to precipitate into the boiler water and then we can remove that sludge formed due to precipitate of sodium sulfate by means of simple blow down operation likewise if we add sodium sulfite it will react with dissolved oxygen and again we are getting sodium sulfate which is easily removable however whenever we are adding here hydrazin that hydrazin will react with oxygen at higher temperature and it will lead to the formation of a nitrogen that nitrogen though it is a corrosive but its corrosiveness is less as compared to dissolved oxygen and therefore we can minimize the corrosion due to dissolved oxygen the second impurity which is responsible for the boiler corrosion is nothing but dissolved carbon dioxide 
or the carbon dioxide produced into the boiler feed water due to some uh, decomposition reactions. Just like as we know that boiler feed water it has a higher temperature and if that boiler feed water contains some uh, magnesium bicarbonate or calcium bicarbonate they will undergo hydrolysis or decomposition at higher temperature and then there is a release of carbon dioxide. The released carbon dioxide it will react with uh, water and we are getting a bicarbonic acid and therefore the boiler feed water is uh, somewhat acidic in nature and if it comes in contact with the boiler material it will provide acidic environment to the boiler material number of galvanic cells or concentration cells will form and then a boiler material starts to corrode. However, we can remove the dissolved oxygen by adding a calculated quantity of ammonia that is ammonia it will react with uh, uh, carbon dioxide dissolved carbon dioxide in presence of water and we are getting ammonium carbonate as a salt which we can remove by means of simple blow down operation again. The third reason for boiler corrosion is nothing but acids released from hydrolysis of dissolved salts that is as boiler feed water if it contains certain amount of magnesium and calcium salts as we know these salts are very uh, reactive towards hydrolysis at higher temperature that is in case of boiler water to produce steam the temperature of the boiler water is somewhat high and at that temperature the magnesium salt and calcium salts they will undergo hydrolysis and they will release here corresponding hydrochloric acid and that released hydrochloric acid is responsible for the boiler corrosion that the liberated acid reacts with iron of boiler material producing acid again and again that is uh, hydrochloric acid reacts with iron and then we are getting iron chloride with the release of hydrogen. The released uh, hydro iron chloride it will react with uh, it undergo hydrolysis again, again it will release uh, acid. The released acid again it will react with boiler material that is iron and lead to the formation of hydrochloric acid again and that chain reaction continues and even the presence of a small amount of magnesium salt will cause the corrosion of iron to a larger extent. That means the released uh, salts or acids due to hydrolysis of corresponding salts they are also responsible for the boiler corrosion here. Then we will discuss about the remaining disadvantage that is priming and foaming which is generally uh, due to the improper boiler design and uh, that uh, may be due to the high steaming rate of a boiler feed water. Now, what is priming? Priming is nothing but when boiler is steaming rapidly some particles of liquid water are carried along with the steam and the process of wet steam formation is called as a priming. That means as we know if boiler feed water contains some uh, dissolved uh, salt impurities these dissolved salt impurities they are responsible for scale and sludge formation inside the boiler. Scale will deposit uh, hardly onto the inner wall of the boiler whereas uh, sludge precipitate will be a uh, floating state into the boiler water and both scale and sludge are nothing but they are a um, poor conductor of heat. That means uh, to maintain the steaming rate inside the boiler water we have to provide a extra heat to the boiler as scale and sludge they are the poor conductor of heat and due to overheating of boiler the steaming rate of boiler water changes and if that steaming rate increases suddenly along with the steam from the surface of a boiler water some water droplets will enter into steam here. This process is called as priming. Now what are the causes for priming phenomenon that it may be due to the presence of large amount of dissolved salts that will lead to the overheating of the boiler material due to which the steam velocity changes and then sudden boiling of water takes place here. It might be due to the improper boiler design therefore sudden increase in steam production rate happens there and then the water droplets from the surface of boiler water enters into the steam that is called as priming process. Then how we can prevent the priming phenomenon? Generally by fitting mechanical steam purifiers at the outlet these mechanical steam purifiers will remove water droplets from the steam and we are getting a high quality steam 
by avoiding rapid change into the steaming rate, by maintaining lower water level into the boiler, also by efficient softening and filtration of boiler feed water, we can avoid the formation of a, a priming. Then foaming is there. Foaming is nothing but it is the formation of a persistent layer of foam or bubble layer on the surface of a boiler water which do not break easily. That is foaming is due to the presence of substances like oil which greatly reduces the surface tension of water. And as surface tension of water reduces that oil will lead to the formation of a, a persistent layer which is even unbreakable and that will lead to the formation of a, a foam is there. Generally, the high concentration of alkalis, oils, fats, greases, organic matter, suspended solids, which are not easily miscible into the water, these impurities are responsible for the foaming process. Suspended solids collect in the surface film surrounding a steam bubble and make it tough to break leading to the foam formation. As the size of the suspended particle is very fine, there is a great chance of their accumulation into the bubble and to make that bubble a tough to break here. Also, we can avoid the foaming formation by adding anti-foaming chemicals like castor oil, which will avoid the formation of a foam or persistent layer by removing oil from the boiler water by adding sodium aluminate and by adding anti-coagulating agents. So, by to remove clay and suspended particles, we can avoid the foaming process. Thank you.